the downfall of Mr. Beast from becoming one of the most respected, influential, and the biggest YouTuber on the platform with having over 450 million subscribers total across all Mr. Beast's channels to probably having one of the biggest downfalls on the internet. Man, I am lost in words about this entire situation. In fact, I never expected the day I would say Mr. Beast is falling off. And it happened. Mr. Beast is currently falling off. Not quality wise videos, but a lot has happened over this month of July. Like Chris Tyson, a former Mr. Beast member who was called out for messaging a minor inappropriately. And her association with Shadman, an artist who drew minors in a very way. I'm not going to really go into detail with the Chris Tyson and the Shadman situation because a lot of other creators have made videos about these people and I recommend watching those videos as it gives an understanding why Mr. Beast's downfall was just the first part of what's going to happen. And yeah, unfortunately, this is just getting more crazier as the story develops. Hello guys, my name is Makari. So yeah, it's been a while now since I really talked to you guys like this. I know I don't really upload videos like these as they're not usually the content I usually make. But if you enjoy this kind of content, please subscribe. It helps me a lot to make more videos like these. And I hope you enjoy the video. So recently there is a video that was made by a former Mr. Beast employee who goes by the name Dogpack404. In the video, he released some insane accusations that could possibly damage Mr. Beast's career permanently. The video was originally and probably shadow banned at some point. However, the video has rocked up millions of views as of today. The video is about an hour long, so let's cut to the chase. First, it points how Mr. Beast said years ago in a podcast saying whether or not he would put his something in a girl named Bad Barbie, in which she was 14 years old at the time. Another point in the video claims that Mr. Beast is manipulating his audience, who he knew were mostly children. Average demographic is what, 13 through 17? Is that the biggest spike in your analytics? Well, I mean, mine's horseshit. It says like 18 to 24, but I know all my fucking viewers are little kids. He did this by showing himself walking around the streets handing out tons of money. This makes young audiences believe they'll be rewarded by being a loyal subscriber. Another claim in the video states that Mr. Beast fakes most of his videos. A large part of Mr. Beast's brand is the fact that he doesn't fake videos. I remember when I first started seeing your videos, I was like, this shit's gotta be fake. Oh yeah, it's a huge so, problem for us now. I actually have to dial back my content sometimes just so people think it's real. Also, if, if what we had to film was scripted, you know, because what we do is not scripted, so you have to plan for a bunch of variables that you can't control, blah, blah. If what we did was scripted, holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Have you ever faked a video? No. But this train track is CGI, these bus wheels are CGI, this explosion is fake, shredder is CGI, this car is digitally lifted, this pit is fake, this guy is fake, uh, this raccoon is a paid actor, this island costs more than a dollar, this city is not a band, this buildings are CGI, it's not your only way out, you can literally get an Uber to the airport for $20. That's not a lurker, it's just a guy. This whole room is fake, this contestant is an actor and a secret employee and Mr. Beast. Out this fake door twice. This line is scripted, this action is scripted. In fact, pretty much all the videos with Mac are scripted. Dogpack 404 also claimed multiple challenge videos were never actually used random subscribers in them. Instead, Mr. Beast uses his employees and friends to do so. Let's look at this video. Not only were the results of this video completely scripted, but the contestants are not random subscribers. So many people had jobs. Oh, that contestant had to get out for her job? I guess you forgot she's your hiring manager. I actually recognize a lot of people in this video, including Jimmy's own girlfriend. So yeah, the random subscribers you see in challenges are actually never random. They're almost always local to Mr. Beast, and oftentimes friends and family of Mr. Beast employees, or just the employees themselves. And when they do pull someone from outside of North Carolina, it's usually somebody who's in the industry, who's camera trained, who has built a following. Dogpack 404 also claimed a recent contestant that has been appearing in Mr. Beast's videos named Mac was actually a secret employee and a friend of Mr. Beast. Let's talk about Mac for a second. We will die. Here's I found public records showing that Mac moved from California to Greenville, North Carolina, where Jimmy is located, back in August 2023, two months before he appeared as a contestant. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, this is around the time when Mac started working full-time on the editing team at Mr. Beast. Also, he didn't just move into any old house, he moved into a million-dollar mansion. But I did find pictures of this mansion online, so I fed them into ChatGPT and asked it to create similar images. And this is what I came up with. And it's honestly not that far off. His 6,000 square foot million-dollar mansion comes with a movie theater and seven bathrooms. Why are you gonna spend eight hundred thousand dollars on? I mean my life changed now. Yeah, I'm sure that eight hundred thousand dollars is really gonna change your life. Max is a nice car. Don't worry about you right now. Uh, we're at the place that uh, we drove to a few months ago. A necklace? What's up, this shit here? What have you been doing for like the last year? A lot of famous stuff. What kind of famous stuff? Just like, uh, you know, play catch my dad, you know. For a year? What do you, how do you make money? <laughs> Moreover, he claims the YouTuber Extreme Hide and Seek video was rigged. In my mind, I'm thinking it's a fair game. Mm -hmm. 
but it's not. If they were having problems finding people, they can see kind of what area you're in. And they came to my area many times, and I was in the smallest cupboard. <laughs> they had like big ones, medium ones, small ones. I contorted this little four foot ten body into the smallest space, and I was in there for hours. And they didn't even open the door because they were like, "Where's the kid? We fit in there." So they went in there, they opened all the cabinets, and my heart was like, "Oh, we're gonna find you, they're gonna find you." And then I could hear them saying, "Like she's not here. I know what you're talking about. Like she's not here." <laughs> the other thing that they said is absolutely no climbing in the air vents or the ceiling, and they said it's because they do all their wiring in the ceiling. Climb, okay. Okay, okay, if it was held accountable, especially because this was a YouTube original production. Mm. Zach would have been eliminated for cheating. He broke the rules, and I guarantee you, if I claimed, if I climbed in the ceiling, Mr. Beast would eliminate me. He was in the ceiling! Next, Dogpack404 claimed that Mr. Beast uses call-to-action giveaways, which are another way to exploit the audience. A call-to-action is simply when you tell the viewer to do something, saying, subscribe is a call-to-action. Early in his career, Mr. Beast found a better version of this, where he takes a call-to-action and he adds positive or negative reinforcement to it. Now, as adults, we can recognize that subscribe for a cookie is a joke. Uh, it's not a real offer, but again, Mr. Beast's audience is primarily children, who may have authorities in their life that actually use sweet treats or video game detentions as forms of reinforcement, and you aren't born understanding sarcasm. Whatever the reason, these reinforced call-to-actions are more effective than just saying subscribe. Oh, but there's an even much better version. The call to action giveaway. In the next seven days, I'm gonna give you a thousand random people that subscribe a free Samsung Galaxy S. In addition, he showed how illegal lotteries work and how Mr. Beast targeted this towards children. The FTC defines a lottery as containing three elements, a valuable prize, random chance, and consideration, which can be time or effort, but in most cases it's just payment. To successfully run a contest or sweepstakes, you must eliminate one of these factors. A contest, for example, eliminates chance, and a sweepstakes eliminates consideration. Determining if any Mr. Beast giveaways have any illegal lotteries, we need to identify a prize, which is distributed through random chance, and cannot be won without spending money. Then Mr. Beast does this many times in his giveaways. For, for those of you who are just joining, if you buy one of our limited edition uh, 40 mil special shirts, we're celebrating 40 million subscribers of the really big video, then we will sign that shirt, and some of them will get random prizes like this. Five hours, we gave away about $50,000 worth of stuff, uh, and sold over 50,000 t-shirts. Selling these t-shirts at $42 each, profit margin would be about $22. But even if they were making like $1 per shirt, they would still be fine. Uh, also, by my estimates, only one in every 1,600 orders actually won a prize, and I guarantee he has real-time analytics on his laptop. He knows they make more money every time he says, oh my god, guys, we're giving away so much stuff, we're not even gonna make a profit. Please, don't you want me to make a profit? <laughs> That's why he keeps saying it. Also, they just don't show how winners are picked, so it's probably not actually random. And again, there are very few videos of this live stream on the internet. I think Mr. Beast probably copyright strikes re-uploads. But almost any clip you do find will have some new violation of internet gambling or sweepstakes laws. Oh, I, I thought it was him. I was like, you <laughs> Also, by the way, fake signatures are also involved within the merch. So here's a clip of Tyler forging, or not maybe not forging, using Mr. Beast's signature. So Tyler signs MB, which is Mr. Beast's signature, then he covers it, signs his own initials, TC, smirks, looks around, and then quickly slides the shirt away. Could you make it any more obvious? You know, you don't accidentally have someone else's signature as muscle memory. And again, I'm not a lawyer, I think this is fraud. Maybe they could say it's the brand's signature, even though it's clearly implied that this is Jimmy's signature, which was established during the last live stream. You know, some people bought these shirts as collector's items or even investments, and this puts into question the authenticity of all of Mr. Beast's signed merch, which otherwise could have been very valuable one day. This was clearly muscle memory, and judging by his body language, he knew he exposed this. Even Tariq notices Tyler slip up and immediately looks into the camera, looks guilty, and then readjusts his body and rubs his hands together. Also, Mr. Beast said during the live stream that this is the last time he ever anything and that was just a lie. Illegal lotteries targeted towards children and selling fake signatures. I mean, imagine if any other YouTuber was caught doing this. By the way, do you guys remember that Mr. Beast promised people who paid him $10 would have their name on the moon? Well, about that, the rocket exploded and no refunds were provided. In addition, the video shows how a former manager discussed how he had to say no to Mr. Beast after he suggested a website that scams users called Mystery Band. Subsequently, the manager was fired. Dogpack404 also claimed that Mr. Beast exploited his audience with feastables. Mr. Beast chocolate candy, in which he claimed was healthier than Hershey's, yet it uses the same ingredients and had more sugar and calories per bar, and specifically said in a podcast that he wanted to decrease obesity. Make a better for you snack because I think a lot of the stuff out there is just terrible for you. Because obviously, so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. Like Hershey's, for example, there's 10 ingredients, super processed. Our, our Fusils bars are five ingredients, and just all the ingredients are way higher quality. And it's infinitely better than the other options out there. On the top of that, Doc Pack 404 claims it is suspicious to have one of his chocolate tickets just given to a YouTuber with over 700,000 subscribers. Hey. It was taped. <gasps> no freaking way. So it is like really t like total chance, obviously. Like you're one of like hundreds of thousands of names. Talk to Jimmy Bell. What do you got to say to Jimmy? Say thank then. you for picking us. Talk to Jimmy Bell. What do you got to say to Jimmy? Say thank then. you for picking us. In conclusion, this video raises serious allegations against Mr. Beast from manipulating young audiences with fake giveaways and challenge videos to exploiting fans with deceptive products and broken promises. As a result, when the internet saw this video, it was crazy.
even if I wanted to watch this, and now that I have this hidden feeling knowing that whatever I'm watching is not even a real competition, it's just fake shit together for culture, I have no interest in watching it at all. This update I was originally going to expose Mr. Beast's mind for the efforts being more for aiding private interests and boosting Mr. Beast's image than actually doing anything good, but in that investigation I came across something far more interesting that no one else has ever found. Part 2 will be far more damaging to Mr. Beast's career than Part 1. So basically in the past, Mr. Beast has been in a lot more trauma than ever in his career. So much so that another employee from Mr. Beast named Chucky, who was the co-founder of ViewStats and runs Mr. Beast Ideas and Thumbnails team, created a tweet where he debunks Dogpack 404's video. He claimed to have fired Dogpack 404 for erratic behavior, worked for only less than a month, and wasn't an employee for most of the videos he mentions to have knowledge on. The tweet covers a lot of points from Dogpack 404's video, so we're going to be skipping it. If you want to see the original tweet, it will be in the description below. However, the main issue that Chucky's tweet had was that most of what he covered are just minor claims that were in the main video, ignoring the allegations related to the sweepstakes and lotteries. And if you notice that Chucky fired Dogpack 404 for erratic behavior, in my personal opinion, this is ironic because posting this is just very unprofessional and it would be considered and possibly defamatory. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know if it is. Anyways, Dogpack 404 replied to the tweet, debunking Chucky's debunking. First, Dogpack 404 points out that Chucky's debunking missed mentioning that they had an unpaid trial period and work for the Idea Guys, a company linked with Mr. Beast. This connection, including the need for permission from Mr. Beast for hiring, wasn't acknowledged, and Dogpack 404 disputes the claims of being erratic. Second, Dogpack 404 questions the credibility of claims about Mr. Beast's limited acquaintance with people, citing specific examples such as contestants from various challenges and connections like the Chocolate Factory video. Third, Contradictions are noted by Dogpack404 regarding CGI use. While CGI is acknowledged as not being a secret, Dogpack404 highlights that Mr. Beast previously denied using excessive CGI in the Train vs. Giant Pit on Twitter. Fourth, Dogpack404 mocks the claim that a wild raccoon was used as an actor in a Mr. Beast video, suggesting it was staged with Chris and Chandler. Fifth, Chucky said they bought the Outer Banks Island for a dollar. But Dogpack404 clarified that they paid a dollar for the transfer tax and $27 in other fees, totaling $28. Plus, they leased the island back for free, so the island cost them $28 overall. Then, Dogpack404 critiques how post production edits were handled, focusing on an altered wing in footage, which was changed to fit a narrative and questions why editing of timers and dialogue wasn't addressed. Lastly, Dogpack404 claims the previous debunking ignored evidence of rigging in contests and illegal lotteries. They refer to upper echelon's analysis, which calls these practices indefensible. Skipping into another part of the Mr. Beast drama, we get to the Beast Games. If you don't know what the Beast Games are, it's basically an upcoming reality competition show that will be airing in Amazon Prime Video, in which over 1,000 contestants play for $5 million. But according to the contestants, who spoke anonymously due to non-disclosure agreements, told the New York Times that they were misled and mistreated while competing for the prize. For starters, several contestants said the intake process involved answering questions whether they would be willing to be buried alive or travel to outer space. They also had to sign a contract acknowledging that activities on the show may cause death, illness, or serious bodily injury, including, but not limited to exhaustion, dehydration, overexertion, burns, and heat stroke. One contestant recalls seeing others leaving the arena on stretchers, while another said contestants were vomiting and apparently passing out during the competition. The Times reports there were several hospitalizations during the shoot. In other allegations about Beast Games filming, contestants said that they were misled about their chances of winning since 2,000 people were invited to the competition, yelled and cursed at by staff members, 
left waiting hours or even days for clean underwear and deprived of the $1,000 consolation prizes they were given on camera. In a challenge involving five teams of 400 people pulling 10,000 pound weights, one contestant remembered hyperventilating and another said she feared being trampled. According to one contestant who told the New York Times, we signed up for a show, but we didn't sign up for not being fed or watered or treated like human beings. Initially, contestants were told there would be 1,000 participants in the Beast Games. They were surprised to find 2,000 of them. Obviously, there's 2,000 contestants, Donaldson said in a video to participants, reviewed by the New York Times. I don't remember if I said that publicly or not, but there is. The starting number of contestants would be whittled down until there were 1,000 contestants left who would then go on to participate in the actual show. A spokesperson for Mr. Beast told the New York Times. One of the contestants, named Scott Leopold, a 53-year-old father from Austin, Texas, who was eliminated before the last 1,000, told the AP he thought he was competing in the actual Beast Games, not a precursor to the show, and felt deceived about his chances of winning the competition in Las Vegas it would not stream on Amazon Prime Video. I'm going to be shortening this entire part of the article, so here we go. Primarily, a spokesperson for Mr. Beast said Beast Games faced issues from the CrowdStrike incident, weather, and logistics. They are reviewing feedback from 97% of the participants to improve. The event will continue in Toronto, Canada, with most contestants moving on. Though one expressed safety concerns, some contestants were unfazed by the poor conditions. Nancy Libby, a native veteran from California, told AP she applied for Beast Games after seeing a casting call on Facebook. Her daughters watched Mr. Beast videos, and she had already planned to take off work. The onset conditions met her expectations because she was told to watch previous Mr. Beast challenges. She wasn't surprised by the simple meals and sleeping arrangements. Libby mentioned crowd control issues and suggested more staff to prevent injuries, but noted that the Mr. Beast team prioritized safety. She only saw rude behavior from outside contractors. She said the first time events can have unforeseen issues, but the competition had a good foundation. Overall, there were reports of poor treatment, misleading information, and severe conditions have surfaced from the former contestants in the Beast Games. Despite these issues, the Beast Games will continue on in Toronto, as planned, with improvements based on feedback. Anyways, moving on, do you guys remember Rosanna Pensino? Yep, that's her. The same person who was edited out of the hide and seek video sharing what truly happened in the beast games from one of the contestants who came forward to her. All right, so I've been receiving more updates about the injuries on the set of Beast Games confirmed by multiple people that I'm gonna be telling you about today. I'd like to read you two statements from Beast Game contestants who witnessed the same, and in my opinion, a horrifying event. I've actually received more than five statements about this exact situation, but for the sake of this video, I will be reading two of them. Lack of water, food, and medical attention was embarrassing and sad. Women and elders injured. I witnessed two seizures, a sprained ankle. Staff and medical did nothing to help her, leaving her for hours crying. Teammates were helping console and aimed to get the staff to assist. PAs ignored us. I witnessed a rope literally wrapped around a young woman's neck, choking her out on the red team. Multiple people being trampled on their heads and chests. I blame the production and Mr. Beast for standing in front of us, encouraging the mosh pits and people fighting over jerseys. Many of us, nervous for our safety, it was difficult to breathe or even stand up straight. The ones eliminated were discarded without food, water, hotel, or flight home. Without a safe space to decompress, we just sat around the casino at slot machines, delirious and starving. In some cases, for over 24 hours without anything. Spouses and family members were furious. I know one account of someone driving across states to come pick up their loved one. The production's travel department was non-responsive. No one would answer calls or emails. The hotel would not let us rebook unless there was a flight arranged. Here is the second statement from a different verified competitor. The very first challenge, it was five teams and 400 people pulling 10,000 pounds. At first, they split us up into four teams, A, B, C, and D. So we all lined up in front of the rope. When they told us that we had to split into teams of 400, no one moved. So instead, they said we would get our colored jerseys for our teams. They started throwing jerseys and this led to me in a mosh pit getting squished. There were three other girls around me, but were shorter. We were trying to keep each other from falling as we were getting squished. This was honestly so scary for me and I know they won't show this. I ended up getting out of the pit and saw a male contestant who had eight orange jerseys. I asked him for one and he told me no. The strong young men were picking their teams so they could win. My team ended up being the red team of older people and rest women. We ended up losing because the people at the end of the rope had fallen down and the rope was choking them. People were on top of each other, squishing them. Production told us we had to keep going and they weren't going to stop the challenge. Well, that led to us stop pulling and start helping those who were hurt. This incident led to six other contestants to leave who had won. They saw and heard what happened and said that their dignity was worth more. I'm going to stop reading the statement and I just want to clarify for anyone listening that these six people who left were not people who lost the challenge. These are people who won. They were able to stick around. These are people who turned down $5 million or a chance of $5 million because they didn't want anything to do with this production and how people were being treated. What makes this even more appalling is how Rosanna's TikTok video talking about this was blocked in other countries besides the US, preventing them to learn more about what happened.
According to the Cambridge Dictionary, the definition of sociopath is a person who is completely unable or unwilling to behave in a way that is acceptable to society. Dog Pack 404 uses it as an example to describe Mr. Beast and it's not interpreted as a medical diagnosis or statement of fact. This brought us into the video where Dog Pack 404 brings Jake Weddle in an interview with him. Jake was a former Mr. Beast writer and a quote unquote friend of Jimmy. In the interview, Jake talked about his experiences working with Mr. Beast. First, Jake talks about how Mr. Beast stages and scripts some videos such as destroying my friend's car and surprising him with a new one. What would you say is the fakest video that you worked on while you were there? Fakest video that I worked on while I was there. This is the extent of the, the fakeness that I was involved to. This is like uh, admitting my complacency. I was a writer there and we were working on a video, uh, crushing my friend's car with a rock or meteor or, or uh, something. It was a rock or meteor in the title, I can't remember, but he wanted to do a prank where unbeknownst to the person, he takes a rock, crushes their car, and they're supposed to think a rock came out of space. We're gonna take a meteor and we're gonna put it on Weddle's car. We're gonna take another meteor and put it on Marcus's car. Both of them have no idea that we're doing that. Weddle and Marcus are probably shot. They have no idea. And so that was the one and only time I had to, huh, my car, what? And on the fly, I saw him, because uh, Marcus was in that video. So Marcus was calling his mom. Marcus genuinely had no idea. He was, he was genuinely had no idea, but. Uh, so Marcus was calling his mom and his mom's freaking out. And I'm like, oh no, they're gonna call my mom next. So I had to text my mom, who had to beg to get the title very quickly. Now she, I'm texting my mom, I go, Mom, I'm about to call you about the meteor thing. You have no idea? Be surprised. And then I hit send, and then they go, call your mom now. <laughs> and I call my mom and I tell her, and oh, she should have got the Oscar. Oh my god, on the fly, she goes, what? I'm on vacation. Mom, my car has been um, destroyed. Wait, what? <laughs> a meteor hit it. <laughs> I'm on vacation. Do you understand that? Uh, but uh, yeah, I did that video, and they're supposed to give me 10K to put a down payment on a uh, new car, and they wanted me to get like a big flashy new car. 10K was supposed to be a down payment. And uh, I can't afford a big flashy new car, because I work at Mr. Beast. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I couldn't get anything, I couldn't put taxes on, I couldn't get anything, I couldn't put insurance on. Um, so I, I do my part of the video, and I get a mom van that I could afford. And uh, Jimmy was like, why didn't you get a cooler car? I was like, I, what do you, I can't afford that, bro. Come on, what are you talking about? Jake also talks about how he was paid more than a man that has a kid doing the same job as him and got fired trying to negotiate pay. Yeah, uh, the, the other thing I talked about was that there was another writer there, uh, older comic, uh, black guy, he had a kid. And uh, I got paid more than him, and I thought that was wild because he was older than me, had a child, uh, we're doing the exact same job, and uh, well, I'm some 20-year-old fucking white guy, I'm gonna get paid more than him. I brought that up. And uh, one of the things I, I didn't like about the way some of the beast stuff shook out was... I feel really guilty about the way this like, shook out. Um, yeah, I was talking to this other writer, like, it's, it's fucked up, you know, that that's how the pay is, and I want you to get paid more, you know, because you deserve to get paid more. You know, I don't have a kid. Um, and he didn't want to rock it up. He, he desperately didn't want to rock it up. He was just, I, don't, I like my job, I like my job, because when you, when, you, when you grow up with, you know, nothing, not to say that he did, but I know I did, you know. You get a little something, you don't want to lose it. So you don't want to rock the boat. But he said, hey man, that's how you feel, you know? Like, that's like, I, you know, I trust you. Um, he, he stood with me. He went in that right, he went that me with me. And I said, I said, I have my piece, and he backed me up. I said, I need XYZ or I'm out of here. And they said, bet, and they gave me a severance check the next day. And they gave him a severance check the next day. And if I knew, if I knew he was going to lose his job too, I wouldn't have done it. Me, I was over the moon. I was like, you're gonna give me a, a, a check and I get to leave? <laughs> you know, I don't get to deal with the, with the, you know, how many Orbeez can I fit up my asshole every day? You know, and I get to go, go home and you get, you're gonna pay me to leave. I was over the moon. And he was devastated. He did not want, I said, he was, he just wanted to be in the room, you know? And I really, I really regret that. But, you know, me and him are really still tight. We're still good friends. Is he doing good? Yeah, he's doing good. He's, he's, he's a good guy. I love that guy. He's doing good. Kind of, yeah. So maybe it's a little better? Honestly? Best thing I could have done for him. <laughs> now that he's a very, very far removed from all this crazy shit, I guess. Jake then talks about a scrap Mr. Beast video where he describes being at cruel conditions in a solitary confinement. So after your temperature checks, how was your relationship with the company? I know you appeared in videos after that, right? Right, so, so in videos where I was uh, appearing later, that's why you keep nice publicly. If you're nice in public, hey, Jake was nice in public, let's have him back for something. You know, yeah, sure. So I was, I was hoping they call back, you know? And uh, I appeared in some videos after I left. I think one of them was a uh, uh, three days in a maximum security prison. Uh, if I didn't do many challenges in that, I got paid. I was, you know, clocked in with the with the rates, and I would get paid and compensated for those. Uh, but there was one video I was in, I got, I got paid a lot for it, but it didn't uh, it didn't come out. Uh, it, it, it didn't come out because it didn't go well. There, there was a video um, that came out probably a year ago, something like that. It was, it was the, uh, it got a lot of hot water when it came out. It was the uh, the surviving like a ten thousand dollars every day you start in solitary or surviving solitary for whatever. It was it was one of those solitary confinement videos that got a lot of media attention because everybody saw the premise and thought, what? You shouldn't do that. And people don't know that was the second attempt. Uh, the, the first attempt was on me. Uh, the pitch is uh, 100 days in solitary confinement, uh, but don't worry, like, you only have to last, like, 30 and we have, like, a video. They're pitching, like, a, oh, at first it's gonna be a luxury vacation, you're gonna have, like, a hot tub and an ice cream machine, and, like, part of the video is gonna be you deciding, like, what, what, what items am I gonna get rid of, you know, today? And they had, like, a choice. They were, like, a, it's only gonna be bad for the last, like, five days tops, so you have, like, nothing left. You're the first, it's gonna be like, a breeze, or most of it. And, uh, by the end of it, after 30 days, you're gonna get $300,000, because it's $10,000 a day. 
I grew up poor in North Carolina. I said, Brr, excuse me, you, I'll, I'll dance for you if you put that kind of money in my face, sure. They were like, you're gonna be locked in this room and we gotta make sure you're on all the time. We gotta have cameras on you all the time and you're perfect for this because you never shut the fuck up. Uh, you know, on, on paper, I was like, okay, I can do this. And I was, they always they always cut me out of the videos. They always, and I was, you know, editors have told me that it's because you have too much of a personality. And so with this video, I thought, this is perfect. It's a video they can't cut me out of. I'm the guy. And so I thought, well, if I have to do this, if I have to do solitary confinement in order to do the things I want to do, then I will do that. It looked good on the visual. Like, it looks good on camera. You know, it's movie magic bullshit. It was a terrible facility. I mean, it was in one of those videos that they had to like get like a separate like tank for you know septic stuff. Uh, yeah, there was a hot tub in it. Yeah, there was an ice cream machine. Like things look cool and funny on paper, but when you think about stuff, a hot tub is not connected to a filtration system. You have three days, it's gonna stink. You know, if there's not a, like a hot water mechanism, so the, the hot tub was a lukewarm tub at best, which I was a silly complaint. But the shower was always cold, and he's taking like a quick shower. And, and I had cameras 24 seven on me, uh, so the, the little things started to build up. You know, there's like, like the, the bug thing was like terrible. There was a factor, in, and the first thing was fine. You know, you're, you're playing it up like you know it's a video, and it got to a point where like they weren't they weren't turning the lights off. You know, I asked them, I said, can we only have like nighttime hours? You know, and they said no because it would fuck up the time lapse shots. Yeah, I saw other videos. They did a uh, like, oh, you're gonna hit X Y Z hours of sunlight. Oh, great! Want well, to know how they figured that one out? I didn't have it. <laughs> you know, one of the things was you got to take away your clock, so you know what time it was. I wasn't sleeping. I, I could not sleep. And I, I have insomnia problems now, um, but I, I, they might have started there. I had a lot of good people looking out for me saying, this, this, we gotta stop. So I, uh, I just wanted to turn the lights off. And I'm vocalizing to people, I wish the lights could turn off. And I go up to my friend, my, my, my good friend. And I go, I go, I go, they're not turning the lights off. He goes, what? That's a war crime. We're not allowed to do that to terrorists. And then, and then Jimmy would come in like every other day for like an hour, you know, to check in on me because he's doing other stuff. You know, I'm just the guy in the cage over here. He'll come back to me in a minute. Uh, and so he'd come by, he'd get the shots, he'd leave. Uh, sometimes he'd have a note to the director. Oh, this song, that would really piss me off. This is a note I got from the director, from Jimmy, uh, when I'm receiving some cash. Uh, he said, uh, Jimmy said, uh, can you say to the camera how thankful you are that now you can pay back your student loans? You know how hard it was to do a take of that? They pretend to make it genuine. But Jimmy's the guy with the money, and if you, if you do what he says, he'll do what you want. You're, you're, oh, you want your student loans paid off? You have to be in this cage. And you have, you have power over people. When one person doesn't have resources, and the other one does, and they, they hold it over your head, you go, of course, of course, yeah, I agree to it. I needed it, of course. There's something about, like, having the cameras off you all the time. Like, I was, I, was, I was not having a good time. But we were filming a video, so I was trying my best to be funny. You know, I'm, I, I, I'm a dark comic. You know, I, I got bits about. I had a very traumatic life. Uh, I have my, 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 my dad is in jail for sexual assault of a minor. You know, so this kind of stuff is very near and dear to my heart. You know, I don't fuck around with this shit. Yeah, you know, I, I have jokes about that in my act. You know, I, I joke about it because you know, that's what you do in traumatic experience. You know, I, 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 abusive relationships. I get out of it. The first thing I do is I, I do a type line about it. You know, so I'm in this situation where I, my, my mental health is not good. My physical health is getting worse. But we're filming, so I'm doing bits. <laughs> I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> And I'm being, you know, like, hey, it's been a couple days, I'm not doing so hot, you know? Which, if I'm filming a video, that's what I should be doing for the camera, but it, it, was, it was too real. If they're faking videos, why couldn't we fake this one? You know, if, if, if we're allowed to let these cast members have some time off of, of, of this difficult challenge, how come we couldn't turn the lights off? And so now, I'm locked in a cage at his whim. And I have to do things to get the cash I need to live. And I got these cameras on me all the time. And I was unwell. I had editors coming up to me, saying, you good, bud? And I was like, yeah, yeah boy. You're clearly unwell. Uh, and he goes, uh, well, because the footage you're sending in is haunting. So I think that made me want to, I gotta get out. I can't do another day in here. Um, Jimmy comes in and uh, I was asleep. I don't know what time it is. I was like two or three or whatever. He's like, why is he sleeping? I don't know, because I can't sleep. And he comes in, he wakes me up. Uh, and he goes, ask me why I have two briefcases. And I'm like, why do you have, why do you have two briefcases? And he goes, oh, because this one's for today, you know, and this one's for the challenge. And I go, what's the challenge today? He goes, you're gonna, you're gonna run a marathon. You're gonna do the two, 22.6K, whatever it is. And you're gonna do it on that treadmill over there. The first challenge I did was a Rubik's Cube. And I'm not, not dyslexic, I'm dumb, I don't do Rubik's Cube. Uh, so your first challenge Rubik's Cube, I was like, oh, I don't wanna do it. I was like, on camera, I don't, I don't wanna do it. You know, just do it for the thing, like he did, yeah. Like, the, the, there was an element of, oh, Jake will do what we want because he's in house. You know, that, that's one of the reasons why they got me. Uh, Jake's, uh, he's, he's an inside guy, so he'll, he'll do whatever. Uh, we, we, we can push him a little extra hard because we know he's good. So I was in a sunlightless, you know. Did you try to say no? Wait, did you have a choice or? Based on the Rubik's Cube thing, based on all the other stuff, like they gotta, there was so much pressure to just do it, just do the thing, you know? You know, the, you know? And I, if, if I refuse, it's just, oh, that's the whole video, I guess the budget's, you know, so much money up in flames, because Jake said he wouldn't want to do the thing. And so I wanted to be a good sport, and I wanted to get the boost, and I wanted the cash, and so I started running at 12. Um, I, yeah, I was able to take some breaks, and I, I asked him, how long do I have? He goes, until I get back. <laughs> and I'm, I'm running until 3 a.m. 
All right, I got off the treadmill. Oh, the blisters I had on my feet were like, you wouldn't believe. It was all over, just these big red... I couldn't, I couldn't walk, my, my muscles were like, just... Like, the lactic acid, I, I... I got off the treadmill, and then the people that came in to like, ice my feet, you know, make sure I was good? Then that's when I was like, I'm done, I can't, I'm done, I'm done, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. And that's when I got the psych in, and I talked to psych about how I'm, uh, not well! And, uh... Like I said, there was a lot of good people over there that were saying, you gotta pull him out. Yeah, I had friends uh, that did some freelance work. And uh, they would tell me, they'd be like, yeah, everyone knows you over there, everybody loves you. And they go, oh, Jake, well, love that guy. Shame what happened to him. <laughs> and I asked them, I said, how much longer are you guys gonna keep me in here? And the guy goes, realistically, like, at least seven more days? I, no, no. And they didn't let me leave right away either, but they wanted to make sure, you know, if it was fine. So I just, you know, slept for a while. They turned the lights off. <laughs> And uh, they, they brought, it's like they brought in all my friends, you know, to make it look. <laughs> they brought in all the people I liked. And Jimmy. <laughs> and everybody was around me making sure I was good, making sure I was okay. He turns around, he stands up. Oh, he, did the, he did the exact same thing when he's pretending to have a human connection. You know when you're watching a video, and he's, um, he's like, oh, stop, you're gonna make me cry. And he, like, touches his eye or whatever as if he's crying. He's, like, he's just... <laughs> I didn't have to pretend to do that shit. She says, uh, you know, as, as if rehearsed by his lawyers. Uh, yeah, you know, I just, your mental health is the most important thing. You know, just want to make sure you're okay. The last thing we want you to do is... I can almost hear the word Sue come out of his mouth. The S, he just, he just stopped before I got out. I, I did not get the 300K, but I got. You guys think of it this way. At least you get to keep what you earned. You know, you were in there for XYZ days. You did XYZ challenges, so you got, you know, 100,000 some change, you know? Give or take, did the video with somebody else, and they worked out the kinks. And then I still got in some hot water, and I knew it would. I wanted to say a lot of this for a long, long, long time. And... I feel good though. He was thankfully given some money and spent it all doing stand-up comedy. Next, these messages were from Jake and Dogpack404, set days after the challenge. Another part into the video delves in a document made by Mr. Beast for people who work for him called How to Succeed in Mr. Beast Production. Skipping into page 19 of the document, there's a paragraph called No Does Not Mean No. When dealing with people outside Mr. Beast Productions, never take no at face value. If we need a store to buy everything inside of and you call the local Dollar Tree and the person that answers no you can't film here. That literally doesn't mean shit. Talk to other employees to see if there's any fans or have any kids that are fans. Try to talk to their boss, their boss's boss. Have me DM them on Twitter and try their social team, etc. If after all avenues are exhausted and you're left with a no, that doesn't mean don't try the other Dollar Trees because the manager of those could be huge fans and willing to bend the rules. Basically what I'm trying to convey here is we call pushing through no. Don't just stop because one person told you no. Stop when all conceivable options are exhausted. This is one of the many tools that when combined dramatically improve your probability of success when producing here. And this is what Dogpack404 has to say. So, so yeah, this idea of like pushing through no's is a big component to, to working on Mr. Beast. Um, and, and, and the way that it manifests itself a lot of times is like a director might tell a producer, hey, we need um, access to 30 acres of farmland by Tuesday or we lose half a million dollars. Now, if you're the producer, you obviously know that means get it done or you lose your job. So, so what can happen is like a producer's calling up farmers saying, hey, I need to use your land. And the farmer might be like, okay, but, you know, I have animals. You can't be making really loud noises, no pyrotechnics, and you got to clean everything up. So the producer sort of incentivized to lie and say, or maybe the producer doesn't even actually know the total contents of the video, right? Things change last second. So... They're very like, they're financially incentivized to be manipulative and sort of, they're putting positions where it's like, oh, it's either the producer's job or a civilian's job. Like where it talks about, hey, maybe the manager would be willing to bend the rules. Well, you shouldn't really be pressuring civilians to bend the rules that could get them fired. Then it points out how Mr. Beast left out trash and debris after filming the video, protect this yacht, keep it, at Aiden, North Carolina. The trash was in the bottom of the pond weeks after the agreed time frame. This made it unsafe for campers and almost delayed the camp's opening date multiple times due to not being able to get in contact with Mr. Beast to get the stuff cleaned up and out of the area. Eventually, the boat and most of the debris was removed after constantly asking him when slash if he would come out to clean it up. 
even though he specifically says at the end of the video he cleaned all the trash up. If you're wondering, yes, we did ensure the lake was completely cleaned up after this video. However, none of these are as shocking as the next part. In the video, Jake has heard one of the workers at the Mr. Beast team was a convicted sex offender with the victim's age being somewhere at 1 to 11 years old. He had appeared in past Mr. Beast challenges like the Asylum video under the alias Zoro while wearing a mask. It ended up being true as the team tried to expunge his criminal record and people online started nicknaming him Delaware as they thought he was banned from entering the state. The offender was later revealed to be Jake the Viking's brother-in-law. And this is the tweet that Jake provided. Here's the truth. Yes, Delaware is my brother-in-law. Yes, he is a registered sex offender. When he was 21, a 16-year-old girl accused him and others of sexual assault when she was 11. Delaware took a plea deal. That's why there was no jail time, but he still had to register. His nickname isn't Delaware because he can't go back to Delaware. He's from Delaware. That was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. He's been back several times. He was hired before I was, and was actually the reason I got hired at Mr. Beast. Before being hired, Delaware sat down with Jimmy and Sue, Jimmy's mom, and explained to them everything. So yes, Jimmy knew. But again, this incident happened in 2010. Delaware was hired in 2017 slash 2018. Delaware was also let go from the company before I was. Delaware was supposed to be a behind the scenes manager, but in a couple of videos he was asked to partake because we needed people. He was reluctant, especially in the straight jacket video because of his charges, and that's why he wore the mask. Delaware's charges are said to be dropped this fall. Delaware has been nothing but a good person, an amazing husband to my sister, and the best father to my two nieces that I could ever ask for. They want no part in this and just want to live their lives away from the limelight. I understand why anyone would be upset and frustrated over these allegations, and I do not blame them. Hurting kids in any way is completely unacceptable, but in the case of Delaware, I firmly believe he did nothing wrong and look forward to the day these charges are dropped. Thank you. Half a day later, after Dog Pack's video was up, Mr. Beast, aka Jimmy's ex girlfriend, spoke out in her Instagram. Her post strongly implies she's talking about Jimmy without mentioning his name. I've spent years, years being quiet, never acknowledging that time in my life, just quietly cheering on those who I saw mistreated. I don't want drama, I don't want anything, I just want to speak up for my 19 year old self. 19 to 21 are formative years. And as a young woman, it impacted the way I saw myself, the way I interpreted my future and how I trusted men. There was no user manual. There was no instructions on how to deal with gaining a following quickly. No cheat sheet on dating someone famous. I did the best I could, but I was not okay. Months of therapy. So many journal entries. Long talks with my mom. Why do I still feel like it was all for nothing? I believe I should be used as a cautionary tale. If something is too good to be true, it probably is. How he treats other women will ultimately be how he treats you. You are smart, beautiful, and capable of a career, life, and relationship you are proud of. I do not aim to take anyone down, just simply and explicitly tell you that there are scary people out there. People will hurt you, use you, spit you out, and then tell you it's your fault. It's all of our jobs to protect our friends, our moms, our wives, our sisters, our daughters, ourselves from people like that. If you see something not cool, speak up. Then Mr. Beast announced he had hired lawyers to investigate the claims against Chris Tyson and review his company work environment. That's pretty much the entire Mr. Beast drama so far. From manipulating most of his audience with illegal lotteries and faking videos, to bring a desperate employee back only to torture them while dangling money over her head and also hiding a convicted sex offender who was a manager for the team. Mr. Beast thankfully took action but hasn't given a response to the public. In my opinion, I believe Mr. Beast is never going to respond with the allegations as he'll just cover everything up like nothing had ever happened and he would still continue on making videos targeting young audiences as they probably won't even understand the drama at all. That's pretty much all what I have to say in this video. I appreciate you staying here, and thanks for watching.
Thank you. 